So, uh, Steam is up at 174 and SBD is up at $12. Uh, so everybody, pat yourselves on the back. All this content you've been creating, all this work that you've been doing, you're getting paid. You're getting paid for it. It's pretty amazing. Uh, life is good, and life will continue to be good. And uh, let's go bring Rhonda on. So, Rhonda, I'm hoping that you're there, and I'm hoping that you'll be ready for this. But, uh... Rhonda, you're on MSP Waves. You are um, you're on the Middle Mayor Town Hall Show. This is hosted by uh, me, Agrode, often going by Skanky J when I'm DJing. Um, Rhonda here is the co-founder or one of the co-founders of the Writer's Block, uh, which is a fiction workshop group, and it has expanded to a poetry and um, screenplays and... Um, like playwriting, they, they just do everything. Um, and if you're looking to have sort of a professional review um, or get curated by a team of people that are really passionate about writing, uh, then this is the single best spot on the block to go visit. And I'm talking to the founder of that right now. Rhonda, welcome to the Minnow Mayor Town Hall. Thank you. Boy, that's a heck of an introduction. <laughs> well, it's, it's well-deserved. Um, oh, thank you. Well, I will tell you, I heard Sun Ravel me there talking and, um, if I'm not mistaken, she said she sat down with Stella Bell yeah. and and mentioned the writer's block, and I nearly fainted. <laughs> and I nearly fell out of my chair. Um, and then um, uh, <laughs> I get a ding where Globocop has published a thing from the um, the great panel you had the other day, which was just absolutely wonderful and i'll be dang if he didn't put me in there Ooh. for the little yeah the little thing that we're doing with the with my employee that i'm paying in sbd nice. she's she's making bank right now <laughs> <laughs> the but, highest paid kennel, kennel technician in the in the country yeah but um yeah it's working out really well um she doesn't have her she doesn't have her bit pay account set up just yet she doesn't have paypal so i'm cashing it out for her, but still when i hand her that chunk of change it, it's real nice yeah i mean that's that's serious money if you're doing transactions in sbd uh, my my advice for everybody uh i I am. I might be one of the only people in the in the room that thinks this, but I think that we are at the beginning of SBD going up. I don't think this is just a pump or a phase. I think that the Koreans are going to lead us in a pretty strong buying spree, and I think SBD are going to go up. So my advice to you is stop paying her in SBD immediately. Set whatever price you want in um, maybe Steam, but it's probably st it's probably the most stable to go set a price in. Uh, U.S. dollars, and then work out whatever that's going to be later for the different yeah. currencies. Well, I did. We talked about it, and, and she is going to get paid in Steam, but that was what was already sitting in her in her wallet. Nice. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. The thing. Well, and she has a, she has a her own little thing, and um, so anyway, it uh, it was it actually she's a single mother. Um, she has received benefits she you know i don't think she'd mind me saying this just um the, the the boy's father has not been real supportive and she's been raising this kid and she's a waitress you know and it's been really hard so because of that spike in sbd she was able to do christmas for him wow. so you know you know it's pretty pretty important stuff yeah um, yeah and i was listening to you a while ago about you know the best the best way for people to, um, you know, the best investors right now in cryptocurrency are um, people who can afford to, you know, hodl, yeah. <laughs> you know, and do that. There's another side like me. I'm not one of those. And, and I don't I, I don't advertise just how bad things are. Um, because that just doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. You know, people <laughs> people know you're you're living in a situation where you have no heat and you have no, you know, working suit septic and that sort of thing. And, you know, they're like, well, gosh, what happened to you? Well, I was a casualty of Appalachia. Now, I do own another home, but I can't stay there and take care of the animals. So this, this position that I'm in, in having to stay and take care of the animals, I'm basically living in a barn and camping out. And the money that that I have made off, off steam it has been my survival. Oh yeah. Yeah. Everybody should be doing steam it. I'm just saying that. Yeah. Um, and, oh, you, I know. And I, this is not an argument. This is a praise. I mean, yeah. this is, this is saying hallelujah. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> and the, well, that, this is, 
that's yeah, the that's, that's what high SBDs does. I mean, having having that is exactly the people that are active in posting get the reward, and that is phenomenal. So that you can cash that out and live a meaningful existence for basically providing entertainment to others. Yeah, and I mean, it just it it just it really does make a difference. And and when I say that Steam it is life changing, and 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 Steam and SBDs and this whole cryptocurrency craze or whatever is life changing. I mean that on a very literal level. I mean this has the potential to you know, it has the potential to do some some amazing stuff worldwide and I mean I am so glad to be one of the early adopters. I, I I'm ready for this ride. Yeah, look, if uh if you're listening to this, you are still an early adopter. The until Hard Fork 20 or 21 comes out, when SMTs come out and when communities come out, uh, and we sort of fix the sign-up process. You might no longer be sort of in the first wave of this, but for the next three months, um, if you're here, you're you're an early adopter. And as this new wave of people come in, uh, and that's going to be a giant freaking wave, um, you just be ready to catch it because this thing is gonna it's gonna. Um, I, I can't even think of the word, but it's like just a massive upswell and it's going to be this self feeding thing of more people come, the price goes up, more people come because the price goes up, which then makes more people come and the price go up. And uh, I really think that especially with SMTs and steam, you know, literally tokenizing the entire fucking internet, um, we're going to be a dominant force. And the people that are here early, even if even if you're not one of those 25 accounts that hold 93% of the steam, if you're one of these ICOs that's starting and you're getting your, even if it takes you six months or something to get off the ground, it doesn't really matter. Uh, your SMT and your community and your project, it's going to be great. Like, is a, is a writer's block going to do an SMT? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, right? <laughs> we were on that. Like, MK40 brought that to me first, and I had didn't even know what he was talking about. And I'm like, whoa, you know, you're blowing my mind here. And he's talking and talking, and I'm like, okay. So then I went and asked Geek, who she's an economics expert. And I think, actually, she beat me to it. She was DMing me about the time I was DMing her, and she was like, have you heard about the SMTs? And I'm like, well, I just did, and I don't know what to think about it. And she was like, oh, this is – gonna save the world you know she wasn't <laughs> quite that enthusiastic but she should I mean, be was, well yeah well yeah but i mean it just so we are definitely we are definitely all over that one and um getting ready to i think we're we're we're, we're on the cusp of incorporating and um going forward with the thing and just really exciting stuff because whereas steam it is going to influence social media or blogging, you know, whatever, the way that Steam influenced cryptocurrency and the blockchain, um, or is going to before it's over with. I think this publishing house is is going to – it's not going to defeat the current traditional publishing industry, and you wouldn't want it to. I mean, that would be ridiculous. But I do believe it's going to leave a footprint. And, um, you know, to be part of that is just – it blows my hair back. I mean, it's just to think of what may be ahead of us. You know, this is big. This is real life stuff. Yeah. Well, make sure you contact me when the writer's block SMT goes out because uh, I will invest. I will, oh, I will happily yeah. partake in that. I mean, I don't I know will. if I'll be a, a writer's block whale, but I will certainly uh, buy some and hold for a while and then wait till your publishing house kicks ass and then. Uh, cash in what I think will be a fat, fat return because you guys are good people. Yep. You're smart people and you you got some real industry experts in there and you know how to critique a post and the writing. And uh, through all of that, you guys just have uh, gravel in your guts and spit in your eye and uh, come hell or high water. I think you guys are going to make it. Well, here's the other part of that, too, is that um, the talent. I mean, in these contests, I mean, SFT has been cranking out a post every day, you know, um, curating all of these stories that are coming out of these contests. And the, the these are lit mag quality stories. And they are, I mean, Negativer had, wrote one a while back that just, I mean, it, it is probably my the, the best short story I've ever read, ever in my whole ever existence. 
and it had everything. It was just just a complete package, and, and I'll never forget that story. A hundred years from now, I'll be dead, but I won't forget that story. <laughs> now, do you do you think that'll actually be better than the Agrotica Cubrotica collaboration that we're going to put together? Do you think you, you think that we're going to beat that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, me neither. I actually, uh, I don't. I'd like to see that story. You're going to have to go forward that thing to me. I don't read a lot of short stories, and I've done like a teeny tiny amount of about a, a teeny tiny amount of fiction, but barely done any. Um, I'd be very interested to see uh, what I think of it as negativer. Uh, I guess you call them negative er, but whatever. Whatever Neg put together that has you singing praises that high, uh, I will stop what I'm doing to go read that. That actually sounds uh, quite fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah, I will. And it's it's something that, I mean, it's it's a guy story. It's definitely something you'll like. So, um, you know, and uh, just, but the, 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 but we have, he's not the only one. I mean, it's, it, we have such a strong wellspring of talent that is there is no way these people cannot write something that is going to sell because when you know when you read some of these stories coming out of the writer's block they are first class i mean the hard fork contest i don't know how many people knew about that but um they did a they did a contest a writing contest where you would try to write a story set in their world that they're going to um set this film series in and writers block writers just owned that contest. I mean, you know, <laughs> we we own that contest, and and it's. I mean, but but now it, Gmux won it. Um, the the thing is, is that it's so deserved. I mean, the story was so good that he wrote. You could just, I could see it being. I could see this stuff in the mainstream and people just eating it up. And so that's the goal is we're going to try to be, you know, pushing some stuff into the mainstream. And I do, do I have a minute to talk about a contest idea that we had today? I know you wanted me to talk about one thing. Well, we got, we got, we got, let's go, let's go for about five more minutes. So I want you to talk about a contest and I want you to talk about a Facebook killer. And okay. Okay. Uh, I think I can do it. okay. you're on pressure's okay. on. Okay. We're, we're looking at doing a contest where, um, we are going to get people to not post on Steemit. They'll need to come into the writer's block and submit to the queue, and we'll go through and edit and work with them, and then only judge after that process has been complete. And the winner of that contest, we can't promise them publication in a mainstream lit mag, but with our connections, we can promise them that we could absolutely get that story onto an editor's desk and give them a shot at getting published in the mainstream. And we know enough lit mags that they the rights would revert and then they could then publish it on Steemit. So it would be um, you know it would be it would be a win-win for everybody. Because if if you It just if, takes one. You get one out there and it goes viral or we have any yeah. success with it, this is a hell of a story. And frankly even it having it fail and learning some lessons and then doing it again um, you and I have talked about judo quite a bit, but however this goes, uh, the it, we just trust that the universe is providing the experience that we need and roll with it and just do the best we can with it. And um, I don't know, loop me into that. Whatever I can do to help that, I'm on board. I like the writer's block. I like I like you and Gmux. I like your group. Whatever I can do to support your efforts, let me know. Well, I appreciate it because I think it's I think it's going to the moon about the time that uh that steam does <laughs> all right <laughs> okay facebook yes um the the one thing that i have wrestled with as far as getting steam it posts onto other social media those bastards at facebook and the developers and they they do those algorithms to hurt you oh yeah they don't try to help you they don't try to help anybody well they help and, like a select group of advertisers or a select group of like sanitized content producers and then yeah. they screw everybody else. I, I was on my fifth account. So whatever we can do to go screw them back, I'm totally in favor of. Well, they have been shadow banning Steemit posts. And I say that like, you know, I've got reams of proof and I went and looked at my insights today and I can see it. I can see the pattern, but can I lay out, can I, could I win this argument in court? Probably not. And they design it that way. They know that. They know that you can never prove that they're shadow banning something. 
But when you when I look at the post, my rescue post will a lot of times average about 2,000 views organically and without boosting a post. If I share a Steemit link, five, about 500 views is what that is going to get. Um, and what a shadow ban is, is not, they don't disallow the post. And you never know they're doing it unless you start looking at your insights because it shows up on your feed and it shows up on a few feeds and you get a little activity on it so you're not really thinking about it but the but the fact is is that steemit link is just not showing up on many feeds yep it's not showing up on as many feeds as you know some something that you just just post and so they they the, the algorithms that they have built into that to to hide that it's going to make it very. It's going to make it a little more difficult for us to get Steemit posts read in the mainstream. What I found is is that Steam Shelves defeats that. <laughs> nice. So what is what is Steam Shelves? What the hell is this? And uh, just out of curiosity, where did you get the idea for Steam Shelves from? Oh, it might have been someone named Agroad, <laughs> but I don't know. Well, an idea is just an idea. You're the one pulling this thing off. So, what what is Steam Shells? Why why should we look at it? It 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 can help us like subvert the shadow ban from um, Facebook. But what the hell is this thing, and why would we go there? And can put can you put a link in chat? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Um, Steam Shells. A lot of people. It's there's a misunderstanding about Steam Shells. They think that they're going to buy a Steam Shelf. And, and then all of a sudden, they're going to get a lot of views and people are going to, you know, it's a marketing tool, promotional. Tool. It's not a promotional tool. It's not going to get you more views. It's not like a link drop thing where people come and see. What it is is a tool of convenience that if you are actively marketing your posts, it helps you organize them and put them all under one link. Like I have a series about Appalachia, about the horrible stuff that goes on here. And if I want to share with someone anywhere about what goes on in Appalachia. I don't have to go to my blog and hunt through link after link after link and scroll and scroll and scroll to find. I just go to my Steam shelf and grab that one URL from Steam shelf that has all of my posts listed and linked on that page and I drop them one link and they have an entire catalog of my work that covers that topic. Well, what happens is on Facebook, <laughs> when you drop the, the URL to a WordPress website, that has nothing to do with Steam. It they don't dig down and see where the links go. You've just defeated their algorithm, as far as their shadow ban of a Steam It link. So anyway, I have noticed a big difference between the Steam Shelves links that I share and the um, the uh, the regular Steam It links that I share. So I don't think it's a coincidence, and I don't I don't think I'm completely crazy on this, um, but it is definitely something that I think people are going to run into. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. They're a bunch of bastards. That's for damn yeah. sure. And just really quickly before I go, um, the the price of Steam shelves had been um, two SBD. Well, that is outrageous. <laughs> so maybe a maybe you can get a Steam shelf for one Steam. Yeah. How would that work? Yeah, I, I think, think we're just gonna have to change that up. Yeah, I think so, that's about right. Yeah, so let's let's do that, and 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 I'll make a post about it. But anyway, that's it. That's my thing. Well, when you make a post about it, go DM me because I'll go re-steam that baby. Okay. All right. Well, rock on. You were listening to uh, Rhonda. Rhonda is one of the co-founders, along with GMUX, of the Writer's Block. Um, and they just create phenomenal fiction. And now it's uh, Steam award-winning fiction. And eventually it'll be Steam published fiction, uh, not just on the blog, but in books and audio and all this other stuff. They're going to... Uh, Steam's going to tokenize the world and they're going to go populate all of your bookstores with uh, Steam-related or Steam steam first content i don't know quite what to call it but uh i'm looking forward to it you guys are awesome so thanks Rhonda. all right so uh next up i got pensive followed by yabamat uh and then uh we'll go do a little bit more late night digging with uh intuitive jacob so pensive i hope you're there uh pensive are you are you live you're on you're on air with me yeah, I'm here. Hey, fantastic. It's wonderful to hear your voice. Uh, the audience, just so you know, you're listening to MSP Waves Radio. This is the Minnow Mayor Town Hall. And uh, I got Pensif on air with me. So what brings you What brings you here, Pensif? 
Uh, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, getting Steam Steam used in more in uh, commerce. Uh, two or three weeks ago, I started looking around to see how many real life places were offering uh, payment options in Steam, like they do in Bitcoin. And there's very, 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 very few. I, I found two restaurants in the whole of the world. So if you want to travel once in Germany and once in um, Africa, Mauritius, right? I think it is, you could have a meal in each place if you're paying <laughs> in Steam. Uh, and that's about it. Um, and it's still very, very uh, rare. And then uh, listening to your panel discussion yesterday, uh, was it Luke or Block Trades was talking about um, getting more places, uh, bricks and mortar places to take um, Steam and to see if that will help push Steam into the sort of mainstream. And I was just writing a post today about it that I've just put out. Um, sort of calling on business owners as a starting point i mean it'd be great if amazon and those sort of places take steam but that's going to be a long way off and as a starting point is there a is there a chance that people within steam it that run businesses and i i'm sure there's probably a good few hundred in amongst uh, all the steam ins that run businesses would they start to take uh, or offer as an option to their customers to take steam a teeny market of course but it, it's a little step in the right direction and just puts the name out there uh, i run a small business so i'm more than happy if anyone came along i would uh, take steam what's your small business it's a web development agency well so okay um here's my million dollar idea one of the one of the things that i think this platform really needs is a fiverr or freelancer clone and I know we have Steam gigs, but I don't think that Steam gigs has like a website. Maybe you can correct me or somebody can correct me. But if we had if we had a Fiverr or a freelancer, because one, one of the things about like what you just described being website development is that uh, I don't have to ship it. And trying to ship things in with Steam as a currency is going to create all these uh, like weird challenges that go along with it. Um, but if we could go do digital work or labor, uh, whether that's copywriting, whether that's uh, music production, whether that's uh, voice recording or a million other things, uh, I really think that one of the first places that we could we could actually do this and implement sort of more commerce is labor, um, particularly labor that can be shipped across digital lines. So I don't know how much you're inspired by that, but... Um, if you could find some other devs to work on a freelancer clone that accepts Steam, uh, that would sure as hell create a crypto labor market. I think Jerry Bamfield actually posted about that very idea yesterday or the day before. I think he's uh, he's putting out uh, a way to employ three devs to do that very thing, I think, if I remember rightly. Yeah, I mean, he's that's a different, it's a thing. I, I clicked on the link and it brought me to a dead page. So I have mild suspicions about how that is going along. Maybe Steam Gigs will have that interface. That would be really fun. Um, and I think I think there can. It's probably best if we start with one, but eventually we're gonna we're gonna need like niche niche versions of this. Um, so we'll see where this goes. But um, you know, another another thought that I had is that um, I've asked I've asked some some people to go figure this out too but just little things like getting a shopping cart that would accept steam um you know just the shopping cart alone would be useful like one of the reasons that people can't do it is that maybe they run a business but how can they how do they set it up i've seen pay with steam work so pay with steam has this process whereby you can input an active key into steam connect and it sends the token and then you get paid and all this shit happens but you know they have to have a team of developers to be able to go create that what um if there's just like oh you run a wordpress site oh you want a shopping cart oh click this and it just kind of imports that steam steam cart or something um we just we, we don't even have the basic tools to do this so um i don't know Is uh, it, i, I mean the shop I was gonna, sorry, I was going to say the shopping cart idea, I, I guess Luke would be the man for that because he runs Foxy Cart, doesn't he? 
Yeah, I mean, I can we can go pick on him too. But again, I, I don't think that this has to be limited to one. I like redundancy because if like Loop drops dead and Foxy Cart isn't around anymore, then um, it would be nice if there was more than one. Yeah, I mean, the obvious place would be a, a simple one for WordPress because that's so massively popular. Um, yep. That's definitely something we'd look at. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, whatever we can do to get commerce going, I think it's good. Right now, we we as an economy really are just a entertainment economy. Uh, we produce entertainment. Uh, and that's good because entertainment is really one of the highest valued things on the planet. Um, so that's good. Uh, but having under other industries and certainly being able to accept steam as part of those, you know, like there next up is communities. Uh, but what we also really need is sort of like uh, the business model to be out here too, where instead of um, maybe communities will work with this. I haven't really seen the full impl implementation, but um, how could, how can we, how do you get a team of people working on a business through steam? You know, like some of the tools that exist, you can't like, I can't pay people. I can't pay people through steam. The beneficiaries don't quite work. Uh, getting automatic payments isn't something that I can do through the system. There's just still a lot of stuff that's, that's missing from the platform to get there. But when we get there, I feel like, all right, we're going to expand to all these individuals. Then we'll build on some communities. And now with communities and individuals, there's enough of a market here to start pulling in uh, people. There's still so many areas to explore with Steam. Um, my background was originally in community networks. And I, I set up one of the first ones in Britain that got very large. Uh, many years ago, and I, I'd begun exploring in um, Steemit the idea of Steam towns where you could actually use Steam uh, and Steemit to build communities because I mean, that, that's how you get the numbers very large. I mean, Steam in, in the whole of Wales where I live, we're trying to organize a meetup at the moment, and there's uh, there were 63 people on Steam in the whole of Wales, and only 15 of those are still active, and we've managed to contact nine, and that's in an entire country. <laughs> so trying to get the numbers in any one locality is very difficult. And and places, things like Facebook, a lot of activity on Facebook is with people you know in a very small local area. Yeah. And could you, could you have what I term the use the phrase a steam town where you actually build it where the council is involved and the schools are involved and the library is involved and they're posting information on it as it is steam it I've explored it and you just don't have the tools to uh, to do that sort of thing so I, I one thing I'm looking at and looking to get devs on it is to actually sort of add a layer like many of the other layers on top of steam uh, blockchain to actually use community tools, simple things like having a what's on listing and that sort of and job adverts, the things you would find in a normal community network, you use the Steam blockchain for it and you can then really accelerate the numbers because as I say in the whole of Wales we've got 15 active people in one town you could have 30 or 40 people involved in a network like that and yeah. um, when I ran ran oh. a network in the Midlands, we had a third of a million people involved in it. If you could get a fraction of that with the enticement of having the reward base as well, that's where the numbers really accelerate. Uh, but you need the extra tools and, you know, Steam, Steam is still a very, very early model, really, for what uh, can come. Yep, totally agree with all of that. And uh, we're going to need a lot of devs and we're going to need a lot of web development. And uh, frankly, you know, even if we, even if you just have an extremely so like, um, I did a Kickstarter thing. I raised over twenty thousand dollars, and then I was like, you know what? It's really hard to sell this thing afterwards. I'm going to go create a marketplace, and I, it was a it was a bitch to really start a marketplace from scratch, uh, and it never really got off the ground. One because I couldn't devote enough time, and two, my resources were limited, and all this other shit. But it made me realize that the hardest part of getting a marketplace going is um, you have that chicken and an egg problem of nobody goes to your marketplace because there's nobody there and nobody puts anything in it because there's nobody going to it. So you really have this chicken and an egg problem. And one of the ways to get around that is to try to make it super, super transactional to start and build an audience. So like 
you know, you just have one really, really basic feature. You want to hire web developers um, and you want to pay in crypto. And this is the one place that you can do that. Uh, and, and you make it super narrow focused and uh, you start building it. And then after that narrow focus, you can start bringing it to other places as well. Um, but that would be, that's my dream. And maybe it's Steam Gigs is next, but uh, whatever I can do to get labor, be part of um, the Steam community, I think that'll help us all grow quite immensely. Yeah, in, in community networks I've I've run before, the, the two main things that entice and encourage people to use them are uh, job adverts and what's on listings. And, and they're the two sort of killer things that get people in. I don't know what a, what's, what's a what's on listing? The, the simple thing, what's on at the theatre and what's on at the cinema. And when we ran it in the Midlands, uh, there was no one place you could go for that information. So we captured the market by putting all the cinemas in there and all the theatres and all the uh, pubs doing gigs. And because everything was in one place and it was it was well curated and well organised, people just poured in. And uh, if you add now, which we didn't have at the time, but if you add now the, the reward system, you can encourage people to put post more and more information in. Uh, and job adverts was the other one. I mean, that, that was the one that on both sides, once you built an audience that was big enough, the companies that were looking for uh, uh, to place job ads, they, they came in en masse because we were so much cheaper than newspapers and the like. And of course, people looking for jobs came in en masse because they're looking for, for jobs. And uh, that sort of thing really gets people in there. And, and if you could build that sort of layer onto uh, on the steam blockchain in this sort of idea of local steam towns that, that would really get the big numbers in Man, like if your job search if you were getting paid every time that you sent your job app right like here's my cover letter here's my resume sending it your way it's part of a steam post and i'm getting money for my steam post looking for a job uh maybe you just become a full-time professional job seeker and writing things about that <laughs> that'd be an added bonus but yeah that that's the problem we can't do that in steam at the moment because searching is terrible you know you the seven day edit rule makes things like that really difficult because you you've got to keep reissuing everything every seven days because you can't go back and edit and those little things get in the way of doing doing that sort of stuff on uh, steam that's why you, know, you, you need the new layer on top wow. which is you know uh, the thing to do uh Maybe there's some other devs that are in here that are hearing you that are thinking, uh, I see dollar signs with this. I see steam growing with this and dollar signs and steam growing is going to make you tons of money. So I, hopefully you're, you're working on this and find some like-minded folks to, to do it with. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I haven't, I don't know enough about utopian, uh, .io yet, but I, I think it's the sort of thing I could put in there to to collect people that are interested in it. As far as I know, yeah, you can drop some tasks in there, and that would help you find other people that are willing to uh, work on this. And then if you actually do work and you make it open source, um, then you, all the work that you do, you can get you know thirty to eighty dollar post reward votes, uh, and you get a quarter of that as SBD. So you're Let's say you get a forty dollar post reward vote. Uh, ten, you'd get ten SBDs for that, and that would be worth a hundred US dollars or twelve hundred US or uh, one hundred and twenty US dollars. So that's not bad for a single vote. DJ, I mean, my idea was to make it open source because although the internet is global, when you when you make local community things, it it works a lot better if there's someone at the helm grounded locally in that area because they just know what's going on so the idea is you build the model and trial it in a couple of places and once you're it's happy that it's working and whatever you just put it out there and hope people pick it up and use it in their community yeah should be pretty awesome um all right well uh we're getting near the end of the show i have two more people that i want to bring on so uh pensive thank you for coming on air thanks for talking about your your project and your passion and um you know, let me know what I can do to help you build. I, I'm not a developer. I can't build the tools. But uh, as you scope this out, if you're looking for people or you're looking for projects or help, um, you know, when you have something pretty solid in mind and how you want to do it, uh, there are certainly I can re-steam these things and try to get some eyeballs on it. 
Yep, that would be great. And if you uh, do know of any business owners on uh, Steam, it, I, I, I'm interested to talk to other business owners because there are various barriers about uh, accounting and, and all the rest of it. That, but I suspect if you know a bunch of business owners got together, those sort of things could be worked out. You know, no doubt someone has found a way to to get it right for the accounting and so on and so forth. So if you encounter any other business owners. I'd be uh, good to know them and just see whether we can work out those sort of ideas. Rock on. All right. Well, you've been listening to Pensif. Pensif, thank you for coming on air. This is a Middle Mayor Town Hall, and uh, I'm going to bring you back to the um, to the listening room. And now uh, people are reminding me that we have to go do some dice. So uh, what are we going to do here? I need a little bit of time. Um, I don't know. Let's go play Lump. Uh, where did I see this little thing? Uh, I lost it. So we'll just play Slither by Velvet Revolver, and I'll uh, stop the recording so I can just post this thing.